Daniel Smith my premier saying and doing all the right things so far as i pointed out to drea a little bit better than jason kenny in that he said a lot of good things didn't do and did a lot of bad things um she's actually doing what she says she's going to do so she has called out justin trudeau for his green reset they're committing to phasing out oil and gas here in alberta and she says nah not on my watch uh interestingly enough Actually, I'll talk about it after. Let's show the clip and then I'll talk about uh, the opposition here in Alberta. Like, how big a threat do you perceive the Just Transition Plan and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberal government and the Green Jesus of Montreal and all the rest of them? How big a threat do you actually see that in reality? I think it's a big threat. And, and the reason for that is the language that they're using. Just transition is the language that they used when they phased out the coal industry. It is a social justice term. If they wanted to talk about sustainable jobs, that's uh, completely different. And we'd be quite happy to talk to them about sustainable jobs in carbon tech, sustainable jobs in hydrogen, sustainable jobs in this new economy that we're developing around small modular nuclear and, and other types of projects. I think we're, we're all on board with that. But to use that terminology, they're virtue signaling to an extreme base that is openly advocating to shut down oil and natural gas. Because look at what ha happened at a COP27. The final communique talked about ultimately shutting down the oil and natural gas industry in the same way that coal had been phased out. We have a prime minister who, when you ran in the last election, talked about that uh, the need to phase out oil sands eventually. He looked at it as inevitability. We, we don't look at it that way at all. We think that the world is going to need more natural gas. We believe that with carbon capture technology, uh, it's going to make it more and more sustainable. Hydrogen at its base, the, the best way to make it is out of methane, which is natural gas. When you look at uh, our oil sands producers, they have an aggressive strategy to reduce emissions and use more bitumen beyond combustion. There's a petrochemical industry that we've been supporting here. So. We're just shifting the paradigm. This is not about phasing out any of these jobs. It's about growing them and expanding the opportunity for oil and natural gas workers. And that's the kind of language I would like to hear the prime minister use because we, we I think, missed an opportunity when the German chancellor was here saying that there wasn't a business case for LNG. The Japanese prime minister is coming this week begging us to do more development so that we can export LNG. And I would like for a change for the prime minister to say, yes, we can and to work with us on making that happen. And this these kinds, this kind of, of targeted attack on our industry, it, it doesn't lend itself to cooperative federalism. That's what I'm worried about. And I do take him seriously because of the, the past, um, the past statements that he's made on this. Well, Sheila, bravo to Daniel Smith. And speaking of the German chancellor, uh, we need only look across the pond to see what energy disasters have resulted thanks to wokeism and virtue signaling. Germany, for example, had state-of-the-art clean coal generating plants. They were shuttered, making Germany reliant on its traditional enemy of Russia for their gas. Ask them how that's turning out. We don't even have to, have to ask them. There's media reports, Sheila, of German citizens going into the black forest with axes to chop yep. trees down for firewood. Similarly in France, 50-something state-of-the-art nuclear reactors, several of them being decommissioned right now. So last summer, one of the most underreported stories, as far as I could tell, when they were having that heat wave in Europe, were roving brownouts and blackouts in France because they didn't have the energy capability. So we see what these kind of virtue signaling energy policies have you know, resulted in in terms of uh, several European countries and apparently Japan. So uh, I don't think Albertans and Daniel Smith need to be preached to by the prime minister. No. And where's the opposition in Alberta on this? They've said absolutely nothing. Justin Trudeau threatens to just transition Albertans into unemployment in the middle of the a boom that's picking up. I think that's really why he's so focused on this is Alberta is about to be very, very economically powerful in Confederation again. And they have a premier who says we are going to execute that power within Confederation. And so that's this move to quickly kneecap Alberta before it gets a little bit too haughty, I guess is the right word.